all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in love. Oh, the darkness tries to hide, trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great, great is our God.
My name is Monica Johnson. It is now time to acknowledge our guests. On behalf of the Antioch family, we welcome you to this worship experience. Our purpose here today is to pray and celebrate God through worship. Our desire is to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We hope to equip you through God's word in order to teach and grow healthy disciples. If this is your first time visiting with us and you registered at the information table, you were given a plant. That plant is grounded and rooted in the soil by its roots. We pray that you will be grounded and rooted as you continue to grow and study God's Word. We are here to encourage, help, and support you in your walk with God. Because all people matter to God. Once again, thank you for worshiping with us today. Antioch members, please stand and welcome our guests. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. He shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the perilous that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot under a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I shall satisfy him and show him my salvation. Good morning, Antioch. We appreciate you joining us each and every single week. We have so many people who join us, friends and family, and we just want to stop and appreciate you. This morning, we want to pause for a word of prayer. It is at times like this that prayer is so important. We are on the cusp of celebrating not only a great martyr of our Christian faith, Dr. Martin Luther King, but we are also on the precipice of a transition of power that has been anything but peaceful. Normally, we would not address such concerns. However, we want to make sure that you understand that God knows and hears what we pray. So we want to pause and we want to cast our cares on him because the Bible says he cares for us. So we take our concerns to the altar of God. We take our lives and our thoughts. And so we want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come right now asking you to bless every single person that is gathered here today. We pray, God, for every person watching us on a screen, whether it be live or whether they're watching the recording of it. We ask God that the power of prayer is not contained to the moment that it is prayed, but it has power to move into the future. It has power to cover circumstances yet to be done. And so, Lord, we come now seeking that power in this prayer. We come asking you, God, to be more than enough. 
Father, we know, God, that only you can give us what we need, God, in times like this. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you have been faithful. Now, Lord, we're asking, God, that in the seasons to come, in the times to come, as this year begins to unfold, that, God, you would continue to protect us. You have been a faithful God, and David said that you've never seen the righteous forsaken. So we stand on the promises of your word that you are truly a faithful God. Father, we need you today. Father, we pray right now for folks who are struggling. God, there is somebody who is watching us that their finances are fickle and they are out of control. And God, we're praying that you would supply in the midst. We ask God that right now, that Lord, you would bless, that you would move like no other person can. Father, there's somebody whose heart is depressed, God. We're having mental struggles. God, we pray that you would uplift their minds and hearts. For God, you said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. God, we pray, God, that you would touch the spiritual battle raging in someone's mind, trying to take their faith, trying to take their fruitfulness, trying to take their future. God, we bind Satan in the name of Jesus. The blood is against you. Father, we ask now that, Lord, that you would bless, that you would touch families that are struggling, marriages that are struggling, parent relationships that are strained because of this virus, because of distance. God, heal in hurting places. Heal broken hearts. Heal cancer. Heal diabetes. We speak against you by their stripes. By Jesus' stripes, you are healed. We proclaim healing is on its way in Jesus' name. Father, we need you. We need you to touch. We need you to go to the places we can't. We need you to stand in the hallways where power is being transitioned. We need you to touch hearts and minds. We pray for the president and the one to come. We pray, God, for our senators and congressmen. We pray, God, for our governors and supervisors and county board leaders. We pray, God, for our city governors and mayors and officials and councilmen. We pray, God, for our aldermen. We pray, God, for those who have rule and authority over us that your will be done in their lives. We need you to protect us and keep us. God, we pray now, God, for this service today. We pray, God, that your word would go forth. We pray that you would endow and imbue our pastor with power to preach your word, to give us something, cut to the continuity of our situation that would allow us to know that you are here and you hear us. Father, we pray that the heaviness of heart would be lifted. We pray, God, that the, the cloudiness of mind would be shifted away from those who are struggling. Touch us, God. Bless us as never before. Keep us is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. We would like to thank you for joining in with us uh, this Sunday. We want to thank those online and who give in person and through our web page and our, our app and who are mailing in your givings. We want to encourage you to continue to support this ministry at Antioch Progressive Church. You can mail your tithes and offering in and your giving to 7650 Amherst Street, 95832. Please do not mail cash. Once again, we want to thank you for your support this year. Our scripture is going to come from Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? and tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole world. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me, then see if I will pour you out a blessing, says the Lord of hosts. Father God, we thank you for this day, this opportunity, Heavenly Father. We ask you to accept our gifts and tithes and offering as to the belief in the word of God because we know that Satan has no power over our gift, for this belongs to God and we belong to God for the upbuilding of his kingdom, the spread of the gospel, and the support of the poor. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us this morning.
Good morning. We would like to have a word of prayer with you this morning. Our Father and our God, we just come to your holy presence, standing in need of your divine grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness. We come this morning, Father, thanking you for what you have done with us, for us, and through us, bringing us through the year 2020. Lord, we ask you to help us to look in retrospect and be appreciative of the things that you brought us through and help us to have understanding for what we're facing in 2021. Father, we ask you to do what we cannot do, and that is to give us a peace within our spirits and within our hearts. Give us an understanding of your word, your will, and your desire for your creation, for this universe, for the men and women all around the world. We all stand in need of your divine guidance, your divine understanding to your will and way that we would be able to walk in the midst of that. We thank you, Father for what you're going to do and what you've already done. You're opening our eyes and bringing mindful of the things that you have said in your word and how that you are going to declare it and bring it to pass. As we read your word, as we meditate on your word, as we think and give us the glory and the understanding of the joy of your presence in everyday living. We thank you, Father. And we ask you to fulfill that heart desire for us to have a closer, intimate relationship and walk with you on a daily basis. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We want to speak today to a scripture that's very familiar with us in Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God wants us to know that he has possessions for us and he is the master of all things. God's purpose, his plan, God's process, and God's promises. The reason why we need to stand and speak the word of God in 2021, we need to learn from the past as what has happened in our lives of God's chosen people that we may prosper from their mistakes. God's word is to be honored, obeyed, and to be respected at all times. Whenever his word is disobeyed or disrespected in the lives of his people, we can expect the consequences of his wrath. And I want to read to you this morning out of the book of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verses 20 and 21. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. These are the words that God has shared with his people. But I also want to take you over to the book of Judah the book of Jude, verses 14 and 15. I want to read that to you that you might have an understanding that what God says in his word, regardless when it was said, he's going to fulfill just what he said. And we need to understand that. The book of Jude, verse 14 and 15. This is what it says. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, 
prophesies of these sayings, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are the words of God coming out of the book of Jude that he wants us to understand whatever God says he means and whatever he decides to take action to bring us back in line, we can expect his consequences. But most people of this world today do not accept or realize is that the world is not man's. We act as if we are the owners. God is the creator. He is the owner. We exist because of what he has desired for us. When one reads and understands and comprehends and applies, one comes to know that God himself intervenes in human history to reveal and fulfill his divine will for his created universe includes heaven and earth. Only the Bible does God give us the explanation to where he came from and what and why and how he plans on doing with his created universe. In Genesis 1 and 1, he makes a very profound statement. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. In Psalms 24 and 1, he states that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. God does have a purpose. He has a plan. He has a process to reveal his divine will for his creation. It is never revealed all in one place in his Bible for his creation. And he has said in Isaiah 28, 9, and 10, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. <clears throat> One of his purposes for creation was to have a personal, intimate relationship with the highest order of his created beings, which was man. That is revealed in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, Genesis 2 and 7 and 21, 23, and in Mark 10, verse 6. Even in the midst of man's fall from his created state, God had a plan to bring that which he desired to an end. So in that plan, he begins to build his character and his nature in man. And we can take a look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for a nation to work through to reveal the, to the world what he desires for the plan and purpose to that relationship. He had a chosen people as seen in Genesis 12 and Genesis 17. In generations to come, he made promises that what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. He called Moses and gave Moses the rule of life that we call the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are rule of life for all of mankind, not just his chosen people, but it's a rule of life for all of us around the world. The Ten Commandments do not refrain or limit mankind in our lives, but it gives us a freedom in God's will for blessing to all the benefits of what he has and what he loves us, why he loves us, has for mankind the highest order of creation, Genesis 2, 28 through 31. The first commandment relates to God, Exodus 20, verses 3 to 11. The next commandments relate to mankind, Exodus 20, 12 through 17. The created beings of God's created world has violated the first commandment of God to man. This is the reason the world is in a chaos that it is now in. We, the created beings of God's universe, has put all things 
ahead of him, the creator. In Exodus 20 and 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is the first thing that God declares that man must do, and this is the very things that is thrown back in his face. I just want to share this with you. This is the reason, this is the reason, this is the reason why we are in this particular virus epidemic that is going around the world. If you take a look at Egypt with Pharaoh, with the plagues, you need to read Exodus the seventh chapter through the eleventh chapter. You will see what God can do. You must read the scriptures that I shared with you in Isaiah 26, 20, and 21. Isaiah 45, 9 through 11. Isaiah 46, 9 through 12. He will bring it to pass. He declares it. He will bring it to pass. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Psalms 30, verses 4 and 5. I'm going to give those verses to you again because these are key verses to understanding why the world is turned upside down in this virus epidemic around the world today. I just read today on my phone how that there were people who had taken the vaccination, that there were 13 of them that died. They were elderly people that was in nursing homes. This is why we have this epidemic, is because God's people have left the first commandment that he gave mankind. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And I want you to note one thing. I want you to understand. Here in Antioch, we shared with you about what our people thought in regards to the Ten Commandments and what they thought about what they had left out of the Word of God and what they had put before Him. There's a list in your outline of those things that we have said. Media, possessions, families, careers, money. We have all disobeyed God's Word and God has allowed us to go through certain things. But I want you to know, whatever God said, he means. And there is consequences behind our disobedience of disobeying his first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We have made other gods out of the things that he has blessed us with. Possessions, families, children, careers. We have made those our God. We worship them. We spend more time with them when we do with anything else. And we wonder why we're having such a hard time. The whole world God shut down, just like he did in Egypt. He had the plagues to bring them to understand that what he said he meant, and he was going to deliver his people. He is going to bring us back to the consciousness that he is God all by himself. And whatever he has said, he's going to do. All you need to do is read your Bible, get a clear understanding, and know that God will do what he said. And there is always consequences for whatever decision we make. If it's not in the will of God, it's going to be consequences. If it is in the will of God, it's going to be consequences. Because God said if we obey him, he would bless us. And you need to read the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. The first 14 verses, he talks about all the blessings. But the next 54 verses, he talks about the curses that will come upon us if we disobey him, if we disrespect him. He's going to do what he says. There's consequences. And all you have to do is review review what he did with his own people Israel in times past he will also do us if you take a good look at the Bible and you read there's over 12 or more accounts of where the people of his chosen people violated his command which led them to captivity and we see as a crisis of our day 
when God is trying to get the world's attention. What he says he means, and those who are led by the word of God, written in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and live out in their actions and deeds, will be blessed. He tells us over there in Chronicles, if my people, he's not talking about the world, he's talking about if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, will seek his will and his way, will turn from their wicked ways, he said what he would do, he would heal the land. He's getting our attention. You think that this crisis of 2020 is something, wait to see what he has in store for us in 2021. It's not over with. There's going to be a continuation of him bringing us to our consciousness of what his decision is going to be. Thou shall have no other gods before me. All you have to do is read your Bible and get understanding in that. God does not change, and he will not change. He is the owner of this universe, and we ought to listen to what he says and what he has revealed in his divine word in the Bible. The Bible stands for basic information before living eternally. Whether that eternity is going to be in heaven with him or whether it's going to be in hell in punishment. Blessings follow obedience. All you got to do is read your Bible and you'll understand what he's talking about. When we obey his word, what he has declared in his word, we will be blessed. And if you take a look at different individuals in the Bible, I like to think about Naaman that he was told by a little servant girl what to do. There is a man in my country that if my master would go there, he could heal him. And when he got there, he was looking for God to do one thing. He was looking for God to tell him what to do, how to do it, for him to be something big and spectacular. But the prophet did not even come out of his house. He just told him to go down and dip at old Jordan seven times. And he had the nerve the audacity to have traveled that far and yet come to the place what he was told to do and he resented because he said I got to go dip down in muddy Jordan there's a river that runs down called the American River that's clean that I can wash it but the servant that was with him said if he would told you something great to do would you not have done it he said yes he said well why don't you just go on down there and do what he told you to do he went down to Jordan and he dipped down. He dipped down six times and nothing happened. But when he came up the seventh time, he was cleansed. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say obedience follow what God has for us. When we obey God, there's blessings. There's blessings. Not what we think, but what he tells us how to do, when to do it. That's when the blessings come. <laughs> there was a blind man that had sight and over there in Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 35 through 43. He was blind, and he came to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal him. And Jesus told him, your faith has healed you. What you believe and how you act upon what God's word said can bring about blessings to you. There was another blind man that was washed, and he was told to go wash in the pool over there in John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 7. There was a woman that had an issue of blood and she was healed by just touching his garment. God speaks to the consequences of disobedience. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 60. 53 verses for the consequences of not obeying God's word. All through scripture, individuals did what God told them to do. It started with Adam and Eve. They did what they wanted to do. And then in Genesis 2, 16 and 17, Genesis 3, Satan is seen as an angel of light. See, we take a look at that. We say, well, the serpent. We think of him as a serpent. But it was an angel that was speaking. A fallen angel that was speaking to Eve. He was an angel of light. He was not a snake as we see today. But I want you to understand that ever since then, mankind has desired to do as he pleased which has been disobedience toward God's will. That is the reason why Jesus says, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It's found over in Mark 8, 34. It is man's will 
that we must surrender to be like Jesus. For we are to be like Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. Luke 22, 42. The word of God is true. He has blessings. He has plans. He has a process. And he has promises. You need to understand. God speaks out of the year 2020 to teach us how to stand on the word of God, how to speak the word of God in 2021. Even in the midst of this virus that's going on around the world, even as God has shut the world down, people in every country has been affected by this virus. That's not a man-made thing, that's a God-ordained just like he did with Pharaoh and the plagues to get his people to be released from captivity. He wants us to return to him. It's going to be done according to his word, according to his word. For he's laid down for us a plan for us. He's laid down for us a process. All you have to do is to take the word of God Meditate upon it, pray and ask God to give you understanding and knowledge and allow him to bring about the healing that's necessary. For in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, he lays out a particular plan. He lays out a particular process. He lays out the end results. If my people that are called by my name will humble, yield, submit, kneel, and deny yourself and take his word as the guide for your life in everyday living. Your actions, your deeds, your conversation should be centered in what Jesus did. According to Philippians 4, 13, he wants us to have the knowledge of his son. And his son teaches us by his actions, his deeds, and his ministry what to do to please God, even to the point when he goes over in Luke 22, 42, where he says, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. Jesus was coming to the point that he knew the relationship between him and the Father was going to come to an end because he was taking on the sins of the world. God was a holy God, a righteous God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he was taking on the nature and the sins of mankind until he was submissive to God's will to save man. He had to give up something. There is a sacrifice that goes with being an obedient child of God. There's a sacrifice that a child has to have to be obedient to the parent. But the parent has a blessing for the child. So God has a blessing for us. We have to learn how, learn how to submit our will to his will. That's what Jesus did. He did that for us, to teach us, to show us the way to be able to do that. We gotta want to be like Jesus. We gotta want to surrender our will. And that's not an easy thing for us. We have been programmed by the world standard. We have been programmed by Satan who is blinding the light of the glorious gospel of Christ to want to have the cares in the things of this world, not looking at what eternity is going to be like. But those of us, those that's out there that God wants us to speak to, to make disciples to be like Jesus, those of us, he has programmed us to have his nature and his character to be willing to give up our lives for the lives of those members of our family, the members of our community, to those that do not understand or do not like or appreciate what we are about. But you gotta be able to look beyond their faults, just like God looked beyond our faults, saw our need and was willing to pay the price. There's a sacrifice. 
that each of us must make. And he tells us in his word, over there in Ezekiel, he tells us very plainly, obedience is better than sacrifice. Church, members and friends, you need to get your life in line with the word of God. What does God's word say? How does it speak to you? What changes do you have to make in your life? For in 2020, something might have been said or done to help you to have an understanding to what 2021 may bring. God has a plan, purpose, he has a plan, he has a process, and he also has the promises. I want you, like I want myself, to be in the will of God that I can be a part of all the promises that he made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. He had to mold their character. He had to mold their nature. He had to bring them to the point of being obedient to his word. So we're going to ask you, we're going to ask you to really pray and seek God's will. We're asking you to bring your life in line with the word of God. We're asking you to submit to a daily bringing steps into your heart and mind of God's will and way that you would be counted as a child of God seeking his will in his righteousness and in his holiness. We thank you and we pray for you. Let us pray now. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing, how you're doing. We don't understand everything, Lord, but we do submit that we want your holy presence in our lives on a daily basis. We want the joy of your presence. We want the joy of a relationship with you, that regardless of what go or come, we're going to stand in your word, trusting and obeying you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is leading me to share with you from the word of God the various names God has and how that those names identify his nature, his character. It's going to be a little bit different as God is leading me right now. We're going to be dealing more with the names and showing you in Scripture how that God, when he declares it, I am that I am, that I am, and I will be whatever it needs to be in our lives today. That's what he is for us. And we'll see that in God's word as he works through the life of the people of God, Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, and all the prophets. We'll see his nature and his character being revealed. God bless you and heaven smile on you. You've heard the word from our pastor and God has truly given us a prophetic word. What we have to understand because this is a Bible teaching church is that when we talk about prophetic words, what we're talking about is God speaking to a person who is hearing and seeing the pattern and plan of God and revealing it to his people. So our pastor has told us that 2021 and 2020 will be similar in the move of God, that this is not the end of things. So I implore you to please study those scriptures, read them for yourselves, and understand what God is saying to our pastor and through him. So I want you to also know that you can contact our church at the church phone number. It's at the bottom of the screen. Dial that number and contact us, ask us questions, inquire about what's going on at our church. Also, I want you to know that you will also be able to email us at their email address. You can write to us. And if you decided, because of what you heard, to give your life to Christ, we pray that you would contact us via those two ways. Don't forget that you can also watch us on Wednesday nights for Bible study right where you're watching us now. And we don't want you to forget that this Wednesday 
is the inauguration of the president, new president of the United States. And what we want to do is we're going to have prayer. We're inviting all of you to join us in prayer at 6 p.m. We thank God for you. We want to thank you for worshiping with us. Let us pray and be dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you so much for the word that you have given. And God, we ask that you would cause us to be obedient to the word of God, that we would live according to that word, that God, you would bless every family. We pray a protection because God, even in the midst of your movement, you've always protected your people. So God, I pray that there is no lack of faith in this season, that God, that their faith is enough to cover. We ask, God, that you would keep us, that you would direct us, that you would uplift us, that you would uphold us and use us to be a blessing to someone else. Dismiss us from this service, but never from your presence. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. God, you are our strength and our redeemer. And every Christian believer types in the comments, amen. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Holy is holiness is what you love for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want. Yeah, uh, you help me say, oh.